In this lab, you need to configure both TACAX and radius authentication on router 1, router 2, and switch 1. In this packet tracer topology, we have a TACAX and radius server, which you need to configure for AAA authentication. So on the AAA server, you need to enable the AAA service, and you need to configure router 1, router 2, and switch 1 as clients on the AAA server. In this lab, router 1 and switch 1 will use the TACAX protocol. Router 2 will be configured to use RADIUS. So you need to add the three clients with their details, as well as add a username for authentication. Use your own name as the username and a password of Cisco. In the solution video, as an example, I'm simply going to use my name, David, as the username. Make sure that you configure router 1 for AAA authentication for both login and enable using TACAX with the AAA server 10.1.1.250. This AAA server is configured with this IP address. So that's the IP address you need to configure router 1 with for authentication, both login and enable authentication. So when you test this, you should be prompted for your username when you log into the console, as well as when you type enable. Make sure that you use a local authentication as a backup in case the AAA server is not available. Use a backup username of backup and a password of Cisco. You then need to test that you can log in using your own name. So essentially, on all three devices, you're going to configure the AAA server and ensure that you can log in to these three servers using your username and password, which is not configured on these devices, but is configured on the TACAX and RADIUS server. So make sure that you can log in to router 1, do something similar with router 2, but use RADIUS as the authentication protocol. You'll also configure switch 1 using TACAX, and again, make sure that you can log in with your username and password. So for verification, you should be able to log into all devices using your own name as configured on the AAA server. Once you've done that, create another user on the AAA server and verify that the new user can also log in to the devices. So note both your name as well as the new user are not configured on the network devices. There will be no local database on the devices that have those two usernames. The usernames are stored on the server. You need to verify that the local backup user cannot log in while the AAA server is reachable. In other words, as long as these devices can contact the AAA server, the local backup user should not be able to log in to the network devices. But test that the local user can log in if IP connectivity is broken between the network devices and the AAA server. So to simulate that, disable this port on your switch and then check that the backup user can log in to the three network devices while IP connectivity is broken and then test what happens when the port is re-enabled. So re-enable the port and then verify that the backup user can now no longer log in, but your username can log in. So in other words, make sure that you understand which user accounts are valid when the AAA server is available and when it's not available. And then once you've done that, use simulation mode in Packet Tracer and verify that when you log in with your user account, that TACAX and RADIUS messages are sent between the switch and the server. So in other words, when you log in to router 1, you should see a TACAX message being sent to the TACAX server and a reply going back to your router. On router 2, you should see something similar for RADIUS and TACAX on switch 1. So can you complete this lab? There's quite a lot to do but do you understand how to configure both RADIUS and TACAX? Download the packet tracer file 
and see if you can complete the lab yourself. Otherwise, watch the next video where I complete the lab.